Uh, hello everyone. My name is Łukasz Konkol and uh, I will talk about code review and uh, how does it differ when it uh, uh, comes to variety of uh, experience. Uh, but let me introduce myself uh, first. Uh, I'm software engineer uh, for about uh, six years. Uh, I was a technical team leader for over a year. Uh, and uh, during this time as an engineer and uh, a team leader, I was working on many projects uh, with many different people, uh, with various experience, with different backgrounds. Uh, basically, I have come across a wide range of diverse people uh, and I'm going to share with you my experience on uh, code review, both from uh, the point of view of the person involved in the code review and uh, as an observer. Uh, I'm also writing a book uh, titled uh, Idiomatic Python Performance. Uh, it's going to present Python syntax sugar in comparison uh, with boil boilerplate code uh, in the context of performance. Uh, stay tuned because the book is still in progress. Uh, we're targeting uh, for publishing the book uh, at the beginning of uh, 2020, but uh, that date is not confirmed yet. Uh, I've been also sharing uh, my knowledge uh, at uh, EuroPython last year, uh, two editions of PyCon UK, uh, PyCon San Sebastian two years ago, and multiple times at local meetups. Uh, you can find some of my past talks uh, with these links. Uh, I will share the link to the slide at the end, so uh, you will have a chance to check that later. Uh, first one is kind of trailer for the book. Uh, it's about uh, Python code performance. Uh, and the second one is an, an interactive session about migration from Python 2 to Python 3. Okay, now let's check up the agenda. Uh, first, I will do some introduction to code review. Then uh, I will show you some general takeaways about code review. And then I will try to analyze uh, the differences uh, based on uh, the experience level. And at the, at the end, uh, we might have time some, for some, some questions or, or some discussion. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, let me ask you a few questions first. Uh, who have ever reviewed someone else's code? Okay, thank you. And from the other side, so please raise your hand if your code has ever been reviewed. Okay. Uh, thank you. So you're, you're pretty much familiar with the concept of the code review, but uh, let's get some introduction of the subject. Uh, first of all, it's uh, one of the software quality assurance steps. Uh, and code review actually means to read and analyze uh, the source code. And that one might be obvious, but code review should be done by human. And now you probably picture this. But what I really mean is this. So Captain Pepe to the rescue. Uh, some, some people call it nitpicking. Uh, I like to call it Captain Pepe. Uh, there he is. So this line is one character too long, or uh, this line should be split in different ways. Code formatting is wrong here. So the point here is that uh, there is no point in spending time on uh, things that can be done by the tool rather than the, uh, the human uh, being, uh, but we will get to that soon. So coming back uh, to the code review. Uh, so it should not be done by an author, uh, as this is the code check, it's good to not be biased. And as we all know, uh, you will always want to protect your code uh, but there is an exception uh, when author should review uh, his own code, but I will get back to that later. Uh, also, code review should be done by your peers and, and not by your manager. And uh, that's pretty obvious one. Uh, no one wants your boss to look over your shoulder. Uh, and one more thing about code review, uh, everyone, whether beginner or expert, uh, should get the code review at, and should give a code review at least once for a while. Uh, it's basically similar to love. Uh, if you're only giving and not receiving or the other way around, only receiving and not giving, it's probably not a good thing. Okay, let's now talk about why do we do code review. First of all, 
we want to find as many defects as we can before our users find them. Uh, we also want to check if there can be a better solution to the problem. Uh, we can refer here to the performance, scalability, maintainability, uh, security, and many other aspects of the software. Uh, all of these checks uh, sh are done at the very early stage. Uh, so we're reviewing that uh, shiny new code right after it's written uh, to avoid uh, spilling bad code to master and pushing it uh, to next stages of software development. Uh, this way we ensure the proper code quality. And another takeout of the code review is shared code ownership. So when you review the code uh, written by your colleague, uh, you feel more and more responsible about it uh, because you're giving your stamp on, of approval on it. Uh, another aspect of code review is uh, knowledge sharing. When we review someone else's code, uh, we're learning about uh, new features that are introduced uh, to the project and how these are implemented uh, in our code. But we can also learn some new algorithms uh, or some uh, language specifics uh, that we didn't know about before. Uh, also, knowledge sharing leads to reducing the bus factor. Who have ever heard about the bus factor? Okay, so uh, formally that bus factor uh, is the number of people that should be hit by a bus in order to get the project closed. So I think that this image explains a lot. So uh, if uh, Bob gets hit by a bus and he's the only uh, developer who knows the code, uh, then it would be better for everyone to just close his project because no one else knows uh, what's going on there. Okay, let's now talk about some general takeaways about code review. Uh, as I already mentioned, a reviewer shouldn't waste time on something that tool can do for you. Basic code review is something we don't even think about. Uh, it's frequently a given. Uh, so GitHub, Bitbucket, GitLab, and many other uh, comes with uh, built-in tools uh, that uh, helps us uh, to show the diff in uh, accessible way, uh, lets us to leave a comment, create thread, approve or reject changes. Uh, another tool that we should employ is code style checking. Uh, it should be always done by a tool, not by a human. Remember about Captain Pep8. Uh, it's really annoying sometimes. Uh, there are some example tools, but remember that uh, this list is not limited. Code formatting is also something we can automate. Uh, there is actually a tool I can recommend. Uh, it's called Black. Uh, have anyone using it already? Okay, that's pretty popular. Uh, so I like Black because it enforces the code style that is uh, commonly accepted, leaving no space for pointless argument about uh, the code style in the team. So as Henry Ford once said, any customer can have a car painted any color he wants, as long as it's black. So that's exactly what we want to achieve here. Cut the endless discussions about the code review, the, the code style. Okay, let's now automate all the things. Uh, another step to have an effective code review uh, is setting up a continuous integration uh, that is triggered uh, when pull request is created or updated. Uh, it should include unit tests, code style checks, uh, and all other automated tools we have. Another idea uh, is uh, pre-commit hooks. Uh, it's uh, basically continuous integration uh, run locally in development environment, uh, but it's a bit more restrictive. Uh, it will stop us from committing the code uh, if that doesn't pass all checks in the first place. Let's now talk about submitting a good pull request and some advices for authors of the code. So first of all, be your first reviewer. Uh, this is the only exception to what I said before that author shouldn't review his own code. 
before submitting a pull request, uh, it's good to check your code like, like uh, you would do to someone else's piece of code. Uh, if you catch something on your own, then you can save a lot of time of reviewers and uh, shorten the feedback loop so your feature gets uh, in production uh, more quickly. Another one, uh, keep your div as small as possible. Uh, studies shows that uh, 500 lines of code is already too much for uh, one pull request. Uh, let's keep it below that if possible. And that's also actually proven that uh, smaller pull request gets more attention and uh, more defects are found. Uh, then, uh, then, uh, uh, while the longer pull requests uh, are just getting formally accepted and that's all. Uh, so this doesn't help to, to keep the code quality. If uh, changes grow too big, uh, think about uh, partial pull requests. Uh, this should uh, include few parts of, of uh, separate functionalities. Uh, and another way around is uh, to have a pull request uh, of work in progress. Uh, don't be afraid to show your unfinished code. Uh, it, if changes uh, are, are too big, uh, it's, it's good both for you and uh, for the reviewer. A uh, reviewer can get familiarized with your code uh, uh, you're working on before it gets too big and too complex. Uh, it will help him to understand and to gradually uh, check more code. And on the other hand, if a reviewer spots something, uh, some, some bad, de uh, bad design decision, for example, uh, you will have much less work to fix it uh, at th this early stage uh, of development rather than at the very end of the long work. Another useful field, I think, is uh, to mark main point of interest uh, in your pull request. You can either explain what's going on in specific fragments, uh, or you can point out uh, to the reviewer that uh, some part of code needs a special attention, for example, because uh, it might be error-prone uh, or there are so much cases. Uh, if code is com too complicated, uh, it's good to discuss the code together. Uh, it can be initiated either by uh, the author uh, who's aware of code complexity uh, or by the reviewer who gets lost uh, in the code. Uh, in such case, uh, get, through with, uh, get through the code with your reviewer or even uh, set up a meeting with the whole team uh, if, if the feature is, is major for your project, uh, explaining main parts of this feature, digging deep into the code, explaining it. And this makes it easier to review by your teammates uh, and it also supports uh, knowledge sharing among the team. And now by maybe a bit less pleasant aspect. So if you don't agree with the comment that reviewer has left, um, discuss it outside of the code review tool. Uh, it's easy if you're sitting next, next to each other, just poke them and discuss. Uh, if you're remotely, just take the discussion to some chat you're, you're using, like Slack or Skype or, or even set up a call. Uh, you don't want uh, everyone uh, watching a fight between the two of you. Uh, and also the point is to uh, keep the code review tool clean. So, and it's, it's also about speed. Discussing uh, in, in the code review tool uh, will make you longer to wait for the response uh, and uh, usually, usually make the whole uh, review process longer. Uh, at the end, don't forget to leave a comment uh, on the outcome of the discussion uh, when you come to the conclusion, actually, because uh, if you still don't agree, uh, well, it's really complicated. Uh, I have come across a uh, few methods uh, uh, whether vote on your options with the whole team uh, or call an authority uh, from outside the team to be the kind of judge. Uh, I know that both of these options are not uh, perfect. Uh, it's all about compromises uh, and uh, conflict management in your team. Let's now talk about some advices for reviewer. So first of all, read what the feature is about. 
Uh, it should uh, be all there in the ticket in your issue tracker. Uh, because it's basically impossible to give a proper code review uh, without even being aware what this code is supposed to do. Then take your time on code review. Uh, take the time to properly focus and analyze uh, each fragment of the code. So in general, uh, you should review no more than four, uh, 400 lines of code uh, per hour. And also limit the time you spend on reviewing the code. Don't spend more than an hour on the code review without a break, because you're simply not able to focus good enough uh, after, after a while. Uh, also, don't spend the whole day on uh, reviewing. Uh, you can easily burn out. Uh, find the good ratio between uh, the code review and your other responsibilities. And depending on your skills, uh, check for uh, the wide range of mistakes. Uh, starting from the logical ones through the ar architectural and design decisions, uh, also including uh, various aspects, uh, for example, security, scalability, maintainability, and lots more. And as the reviewer, test the code. Don't take it as a given that uh, it works. Check base usage of the code, uh, verify so much cases, just to make sure it, it, it works. And the last but not least, uh, always be professional and give constructive feedback. It can really get messy if uh, comments are targeted personally, um, but we'll get back to it later. Okay, let's now talk about uh, the situation uh, when it gets really complicated, different perspective, human factor. Uh, I will focus mostly on the experience differences uh, as this seems to be uh, a main touch point uh, most frequently. Okay, let's first talk about the perspective of the newcomer and uh, an expert as an authors of the pull request. Uh, I will use some images to describe it uh, more expressively. So let's now think like a beginner or the newcomer to the team. Uh, they get some task, uh, they submit pull request with the changes. They are often overwhelmed. The situation is new to them. They can feel like a defendant in the courtroom. So prosecutor, the reviewer is accusing them of uh, bad code quality. Uh, the team is watching, listening, taking notes, or just uh, remembering things uh, to, to point it out later. And of course, there is a judge, the manager who looks at the progress uh, of the newly employed uh, developer. They can even, even feel more like being beaten up in the schoolyard. A uh, reviewer is bullying them and the rest of the team is just watching and laughing. Uh, I think we all get the point that the newcomer is feeling un uncomfortable, unsafe, uncertain. Expert, on the other hand, uh, this situation isn't new for an expert. It's like a rodeo. Uh, just get some rough ride, maybe sweat a bit, uh, and get some adrenaline and just go home, forget about it. But there is a catch. So at this picture, uh, who is the author and who is the reviewer? So at the first sight, the reviewer is the bull that tries hard to uh, find something that will throw out our expert author cowboy on the ground. But it doesn't have to be this way. An expert author can actually be the bull that is furious about the reviewer uh, cowboy trying to uh, mess, mess up with him. Of course, uh, I'm talking about most frequent cases. All of this is just generalization. Uh, even a regular author can be uh, intimidated uh, in some situations, like it's their first code review in their lives. Uh, on the other hand, newbie can be so confident or even uh, cheeky, like it's nothing new to them. Uh, my point here is to respect each other and access limits proper uh, and access rim limits properly. So let's talk about reviewing beginner's code. Uh, what you should know when you start reviewing the code of the newcomer. 
I will leave these images here so we'll keep in mind uh, the, mm, the attitude of the newcomer. As I mentioned earlier, be professional. But in this case, you should also be super polite, especially when it's the first code review of that person. Remember that everyone has their own limits and their own specific background. And, and what might sound completely reasonable to you might, so might, might sound like a personal attack for someone else, uh, especially when they are stressed because of the new situation uh, and feel like being judged. When you find a mistake, explain it clearly and extensively. <clears throat> what might be obvious, obvious for you and uh, everyone in, uh, in the team, it might be completely mysterious uh, for someone who is new to the industry. Backing up your comment uh, with, with some code examples or input-output examples is usually a good idea to explain your point. Uh, same applies to the situation if you find something that could be improved. Uh, walk through the all possible solutions with the author, uh, explaining trade-offs. Uh, again, back it up with, with some code samples, proofs of concepts, benchmarks, etc. Uh, and probably the most important thing, show the newcomer your appreciation. Tell them that they did a good job. Praise them. We all want to hear it. This may sound unnecessary for you. Uh, we're all doing our jobs after all. Uh, but think like the newcomer again. Go back to these pictures. Uh, any appreciation they receive increase their self-esteem self and help them reduce the fear for the next code review. Let's now think about reviewing experts' code. So, I will start with the Latin sentence here. Quid quid latine dictum sit album videtur. Does anyone know what that means? Yeah, yeah that's correct. Everything, everything written in Latin looks very profound. So, <laughs> yeah, that also applies here. Uh, so when we see the pull request from the person who has lots of experience and is in the team for the long time, uh, we often think that their code just must be perfect. We take it just as a given. But there is nothing more deceptive. Uh, everyone makes mistakes. It's just a matter of finding them. Uh, of course, experts will not make some newbie mistakes very frequently. Uh, but there is always something that can go wrong. We all know that. We're, af we're all human after all. Another aspect of reviewing experts' code is knowledge sharing. So expert is a pure vault of information. Use it fully. It's a great opportunity for you to learn about the code base uh, or about some, some uh, language gems. Uh, it also helps reducing uh, bus factor uh, I mentioned before. So when you would need to apply some changes uh, in, this, in the same area in the future, uh, you will feel much more comfortable if you already uh, know what's going on there. Don't be afraid to ask if you're not sure what's going on in the code. If you're a newcomer, uh, it's probably better to speak to the author offline for basically two reasons. First of all, you might just feel much more comfortable speaking just to one person who's actually here to help you, rather than asking something in, in the public space. And the second reason uh, to take it offline is just to don't spam the, the code review tool. Okay, that's all. Thank you for your attention. Uh, you can find uh, slides uh, on the left. And uh, I would also ask you uh, for some piece of feedback uh, that will help me improve uh, myself for the future talks. Uh, you can find the simple form on, on the right. Uh, now, if we have some time, uh, I'm happy to take some questions. So, first of all, thank you. Um...
We should have time for one or two questions for sure. So any first questions to go? Okay, maybe then I'm asking a question. If you're not using black, um, how do you avoid the, um, sounding nitpicky about especially style uh, things? Because it seems quite a balancing act often, right? Yeah, so this, the simplest way is to just uh, introduce the, the tool I was talking about. <laughs> uh, yeah, just uh, PyCode style or black, and then all discussions are, are cut. Yeah, but uh, if, if that's not the case, uh, then, yeah, like like I said, that uh, maybe take a vote uh, in the team on the options we have, and then then decide on on what what uh, what's, what has more more backup in in the whole team. Okay. Yeah, um, the the woman in the back, no, in, in the white T-shirt was first. No, but there should be time for you too. <laughs> so, go. Uh, great talk, thanks. Um, do you do a code review on all commits? And if no, how do you decide? And uh, do you use, same question, do you do, uh, do you use pull requests on all commits? And if no, how do you decide when to use it? Thank you. Yeah, so what, what I used to do is uh, just reviewing the pull request per specific feature, bug, or, or some task. Uh, yeah, we use the pull requests, uh, so everything is there in GitHub uh, and, and GitHub has uh, nice code review tools uh, that, that uh, helps you doing the, uh, the code review. Yeah, that, does that answer your question? <laughs> so. uh, I have a question, sorry. Uh, how can, is it possible to make the team more involved in the code review process? Because I feel that sometimes when people are not familiarized with some specific code and they don't feel like comfortable to review because the person that is doing the code is the expert of that uh, code in particular. Mm -hmm. So, and also if it's a beginner, sometimes they review too much, but yeah, sometimes they don't review at all. They don't want to review. So I don't know if you have some tips. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, that's actually the, the tough thing because uh, when the expert is just hostile, then there is not much you can do. But uh, in my opinion, every, every experienced developer uh, should be open to, uh, to share his knowledge and uh, just to help, help uh, some, some beginners or, uh, or people with less experience. So if there are no further questions, uh, we shall end here. Thanks again for, for giving the talk. Thank you.